Hello, welcome to today's nurture. Today is all about animals. We're going to start by playing a game. Let's see if you can unscramble these words to make the names of some animals. How did you do? Of course, the answer was elephant. Time's up. The answer is a monkey. Did you guess? Of course, it was a raccoon. Oh, tricky one. This one was a giraffe. And the last one, did you get it right? It was a penguin. Well done. It's time to sing some songs. Dressed in his best in a big bow tie Playing on guitar going la di da di da 
saw a big giraffe who he liked to have a laugh, dressed in his best and a big bow tie, playing on a fiddle, going hey diddle diddle, playing on guitar, singing la di da di da, playing on a drum, going rum to ta to ta, playing on a flute, going root to toot to toot, playing on Why did the crab go to prison? Because he kept pinching things! What do you get if you cross a crocodile and a flower? I don't know, but don't smell it! What do you call an elephant in a phone box? Stuck! Which shark wrote famous plays? William Sharkspear! It's time for a story. This is a story about a rabbit whose name was Peter. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank under the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or go down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mr. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was a very naughty little rabbit, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But, round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught up by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, 
but his sobs were overwhelmed by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop up on top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been so much full of water. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps it hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone floor, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard a noise of a hoe. Scratch, 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 scratch. Peter shuddered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him, was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor at the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper the end. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Bye bye.